facilities that make this program possible are provided by the City of Highland Park and have been made possible in part by Ravinia Festival, CJE Senior Life, Gand Music and Sound, and welcome to Commons Current Events Roundtable. We are now welcoming back, again, one of my favorite people that, that I think can really discuss politics the way I like it. <laughs> That's why you're my guest. Uh, it's Richard Reeder, who's a political analyst, and he's done work for both, all three, with uh, Mayor M. Daly, with Mayor Byrne and Mayor Washington. That's, right. that's, that's a good trio there. And you've done consulting work with the city of Chicago, and you worked with 20 election campaigns in political consulting. That is really, that's great, Richard. Thank Welcome you. back. Nice to be back. And I just want to read a little something that I got out of the Sun-Times the other day by a quote from a local council member of Chicago Public School. And it goes like this, the path forward requires tough decisions and compromise. Mayor Rahm Emanuel could do a better job communicating that he feels our pain, but I'll take someone who actually addresses our problems rather than avoids them. I've done with, I'm done with empty promises and wimps. That was, that was an interesting <laughs> comment. Calling Rahm Emanuel. No, no, people before him, <laughs> oh, Wimps, not Rahm Emanuel. Ah, okay. Rahm Emanuel may not be the best communicator, she's right. saying, and he may not, you know, because he's a little bit of a potty mouth, uh -huh. right? That's what I heard, he has a little bit of a potty <laughs> mouth. But he actually gets things done, mm -hmm. and that's what she's trying to say, and she's saying that she's tired of the Wimps before them. And she's or, calling Mayor Richard M. Daly a Wimp? Oh, I don't know I don't know. she's calling a Wimp. <laughs> say who she's calling a okay. win. But he, she does this, but we, we do discuss that the, one of the things that Mayor Emanuel has outlined, uh, he has his pension reform plan, he has also discussed infrastructure, investments, bringing tourism, jobs, and revenue to, ge to, to these world to generate a business for Chicago. And he, what the media tax is favoring the 1% Manual is using to pay for our schools, the pension compromises he sought in gender criticism from unions, but are essential to our future. It's a quote from yeah. Rahm Emanuel. Yeah. So what do you think uh, about Rahm Emanuel? What do you think about his, um, the way he's been running the city? Well, overall, I think it's been favorable. He, he has his critics. His first and foremost critic was uh, Karen who was the uh, president, she is the president of the Chicago Teachers Union. And um, her, her concern, of course, with, with Mayor Emanuel was the city of Chicago's schools and the school closings, um, the teacher strike of a few years back. And she was gearing for a very uh, strong and harsh campaign against mm -hmm. Mayor Emanuel, pretty much on the education issue, other mm -hmm. issues as well. But education was going to be the... Uh, and unfortunately, uh, Miss Lewis dropped out of the race with a, a, a brain tumor. Oh, that's yeah, which is very yeah. unfortunate. And I think Karen Lewis would have been a strong candidate against Rahm Emanuel because Karen Lewis would have had two bases, you know, a constituency bases. She would have had the African American community as a constituency base, mm -hmm. and she would have the Chicago te teachers as a constituency mm -hmm. base. These were people, you know, that that basically I think would would support. And I think Emmanuel would have had a felt, this is going to be a tough race. Mm -hmm. She dropped out of the race right. uh, because of health reasons. And um, 
Before she announced, though, a gentleman by the name, an alderman by the name of Bob Fioretti. Right, I have, I have his was was was, right in, here was in the race. And Mr. Fioretti, the alderman of the second ward, and his second ward is gerrymandered right now, so he there was no way that he could be reelected all the second ward. Mm -hmm. So he decided to run for mayor. He, he made that announcement before Karen Lewis, uh, and he was hoping once Miss Lewis did leave the race because of health reasons that the teachers union would support him. But lo and behold, the teachers union endorsed another newly announced candidate yeah. by the name of Jesus Chuy Garcia. Well, let me ask you, why didn't they, uh, why didn't they endorse Alderman Bob Fioretti? I know he focused on education, economy, job creation, and, um, you know, but you know, it's interesting. He, um, he wanted to tax people, I think, if I remember correctly in my notes here, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. He wanted to tax people that came into Chicago. A commuter tax. Commuter tax, which yeah. I thought was kind of, um, I mean, why would somebody come into Chicago if he would? Well, <laughs> Ch Chicago is revenue hungry yeah. right now, yeah. okay? And people come into Chicago to work. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of thousands of people come into Chicago to work, and they use Chicago streets. They walk on Chicago sidewalks, and you know they use the parks in Chicago, whatever. Yeah. So this was kind of a, a consumer user tax, and other cities have done it. So. Um, so you mean if you come into the city to work every day, uh, they will they'll make you pay a tax? Yeah. Again. Come out of your salary. It would. It would. It would. It would come out of a paycheck. Yes. It would come it out would, of a yes, paycheck. Yes. Yes. It would come out of a payroll. It would be a payroll. Tax. So you're talking about not people that live in the city of Chicago, but people coming from, say, Highland Park, That's right. and Winnetka, That's right. It was an. Highland. It was. It was a proposed idea. That's it's, interesting. It's, it's not going to happen. My goodness, I don't know if I'd want to work in Chicago <laughs> if I'm working and they take money out of my paycheck. But what really happened? Why? You know, he was focusing on education and job creation. Why I, th oh, I, th I, th I, I think Alderman Fioretti, who is a very nice man, a very conscientious alderman, who was really quite a, a pro-union spokesperson yeah. for the two terms that he was in office, I think he was surprised himself when he didn't get the teacher's union endorsement. So he, he, he was surprised. He's been a big advocate of, of Chicago teachers as well as police and fire. So he was surprised. I, I don't know. That's something I think the Chicago teachers union has to explain to Alderman Fioretti, because I do know, I know Alderman Fioretti, yeah. and I do know that he's been a great friend of the Chicago Teachers Union. Yeah, so I'm kind of wondering why they... I don't know. They forgot about him, and they chose somebody, his name's Jesus... He Jesus, 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 Jesus Garcia, Jesus, born, right. born in Mexico. He came right. here when he was about 10 years old. Okay. Okay, he's lived, his political mm -hmm. base is the little village neighborhood around 26th Street, west of California, maybe all... To Cicero and Avenue. he's the Cook County Commissioner? He's a Cook County Commissioner, yes. Okay. Yes, he's Cook County Commissioner. Um, he used to be a, a City of Chicago Alderman at one time. He was a big supporter of Harold Washington. Mm -hmm. Okay, he was part of that Washington coalition mm -hmm. from 1983 to 1987. And I think a lot of people who were involved with the Washington coalition way back when felt comfortable with him. They knew him. They felt that he was a fellow progressive. Although Fioretti's politics is progressive, he didn't go way back then, okay, to the, to the uh, early and mid-80s. And there was a comfort level with certain people in the progressive community with uh, Chuy Garcia rather than Bob Fioretti. Well, I'm wondering, would he have to be, become a, if he became the mayor, would he have to really learn to be the mayor on the job? I mean, is that what would happen? I mean, he doesn't have the um, experience of, you know, man. Right. Doesn't he, yeah. he? You know, Cook County Commissioner does. It's it's not quite like being even a city uh, alderman. Alderman, yeah. yeah. It's a little different. Uh, yeah, I think you can argue that uh, uh, Mr. Garcia doesn't have the greatest experience. That's a, a strong argument. Fioretti um, was an attorney. He this this was his first elected position as alderman of the second mm -hmm. ward. So he's never had strong administrative positions. Rahm Emanuel. It's hard to it's hard to against. His resume, I mean, here's somebody that was not only prior to becoming mayor, he was the chief of staff of the President of the United States. Right. Right. Um, he was a congressman, a U.S. congressman. Um, then he was uh, a communications director for President Clinton during the Clinton administration. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and then in the two or three years that he was in the private sector, he was $17 million, so mm -hmm. he was a pretty successful businessman. It's hard to argue with that kind of resume. I guess, I guess one of the things that I think really are still bothering the people of Chicago are the closing of all the schools yes. and, and maybe the reopening and opening of more charter schools and that, you know, the unions are really upset about that. And uh, also the mayor appoints a city, right. con you know, to the uh, school board, right? Is that, started, board? that started with, with Richard M. Day. Right. That's right. Right. And so they want it to be an elected, uh, ele to be election. Garcia and Fioretti yeah. would like an elected school board rather than right. an appointed school board. And, right. and what Mayor Daly... Because I, I guess when you do an appointed, you sometimes appoint your friends. And then just recently in the newspaper this morning, I got uh, the uh, call for a quest Q-U-A-Z-Z-O, uh, Deborah Quazzo, who was appointed to the Chicago School Board, and there are companies that she has personal interest in, and the school, and she's making a lot of money off of her companies that are part of the part of the school. The Chicago the, Way. Yeah, the Chicago <laughs> Way, right. <laughs> so, so some things haven't changed that much, yeah. right? It, yes. Friends get, yeah. Friends, friends get, get in. They get in. They get awards. Yeah. Uh, companies that they're associated with supposed to be that way anymore, but sometimes it just happens to be that way. So I think people are, uh, I guess the people in the school board, and this is what they feel uh, that they don't like about Rahm Emanuel. He's still operating in old style yeah. politics. Right. And uh, also they, they're upset about the um, the the, uh, the uh, traffic light. It's the red light, what they call mayor rivals trade red light camp. The cam slams, you know, the... Um, yeah, but that brings yeah. in, as, as irritating it is, and it irritates the heck out of me, these, these red light cameras, but it does bring in annually about, I don't know, somewhere between 40 and $70 million in revenue. Uh, in revenue. Well, what are, they, what are they complaining about? What, what's wrong with the Well, the, the, the complaint is that um, the cameras cause more um, rear-end collisions uh, than without cameras, that people are trying to stop real quickly. Oh, because... A hundred dollar ticket. <laughs> yeah, so that's uh, it's a great and 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 frankly, the city needs revenue right mm -hmm. now. Uh, the city, the city of Chicago, they are obligated to pay the the city of Chicago uh, pension, the regular employee pension fund, and uh, soon to the the pension funds for the police and fire department. And the city of Chicago right now, they're revenue strapped. So. For all of us who drive in the city of Chicago, um, we who hate these these red light cameras. If these red light cameras were suddenly removed, there would suddenly be a fifty or sixty million dollar hole in, in the budget each year. But look at the what, they, what you know people have to pay on the um, for parking. Those parking meters are fortune. Well, the city, I mean, the city, I mean the they're cleaning up. They're also cleaning up on the parking meters. The city of Chicago. Well, the city of Chicago got a big payment for that, okay, from uh, LAZ, the but, LAZ company. But you know, it's a deterrent for people coming in from the suburbs. You know, you'd love to go and, and see things in Chicago. People like to come and see the opera, the lyric, and all these different things. And if they have to park, it's a fortune because they have to pull, they, they can't go in the parking meters because it's very costly. I mean, those yeah. parking meters double and triple. And then they have to go into a $30, $35, Raj. New York City has the same problem. It's a little, probably a little bit more expensive than Chicago. Yeah. This is this is you know this is a big city's difficulties right now. But I mean, you want the revenue to come into Chicago, right. and they're making it so you know so many uh, people that I know personally won't go into Chicago because they said they can't afford mm. to go into Chicago after they pay if they even if they have to pay for a babysitter, young couples, yeah. they paying and you know I mean I used to charge seventy five cents an hour. Oh, no, maybe 50 cents an hour. <laughs> then I went up to 75 cents an hour for a babysitter. Now they're paying like $10 an hour plus for a babysitter. And then they have to go in and pay for parking, which about another $30. And then for dinner downtown and theater. I mean, by but the you time know, they come you know out, what, though? they can't a lot go of, out oh, for That's why a lot of people, people of a certain age are returning to Chicago to live. To live, for instance, in downtown Chicago, a little bit, let's say, north of Millennium Park right now. 
there's a, um, a, a, a city, a virtual city. I mean, there's about 150, 200,000 people that live in the 42nd Ward right now uh, of Chicago that they, they love the uh, amenities that the city provides, so they can either you know walk to the Chicago Symphony mm -hmm. Orchestra, or maybe take a cab to the Opera. You have to move. There. You have to, move, have to there. move. Yeah, you have to move. Yeah, there. but if they're and kids, then you won't get taxed if you come into <laughs> Chicago, right? Yeah, and it, yeah, and they don't have transportation, the parking, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. it's a trade-off. So what is Rahm Emanuel going to do with companies? You think that are trying? I know. Uh, the governor of Texas came in and he wanted to, he was trying to persuade some of the companies like, um, you know, the Deere, Corp, you know, John Deere. John Deere to move to, you know, Texas yeah. and some other companies that go to Texas and, and then they're getting other companies from going, trying to get into Wisconsin, Indiana. What's, what's happening? Why can they afford it and we can't? What's, what are they, what do they have that's different? Well, I think what, and Governor-elect Rauner uh, is talking about eventually hoping that the business climate in the state of Illinois will be better for these businesses, so businesses won't consider moving to a closer by state such as Indiana or Wisconsin. Well, what do they have? What is the states doing that they, well, you know? Well, okay, the states, these bordering states, they have a, a, a lower corporate, uh, corporate tax. Right. Um, there's tort reform in these states, which means that uh, if there's a personal injury case, there's a limit on the amount of money that a, uh, a victim can receive. But in Chicago, there isn't, we don't have tort reform. No, no. no. So, they can, so they can sue somebody uh, falls in front of the CTA or the, something? A, a jury would, yes, a jury could award whatever, a jury. Millions, millions and millions of millions dollars, dollars, yes. And but, also workers' compensation is higher in Illinois. So these are things that let's and say pensions and the pensions and and well and and pensions that's right you know well pensions that's a that's a public thing but it's a it's a debt the mm -hmm. state of illinois is in debt because mm -hmm. of the of mm -hmm. the public pensions so again the the bond ratings the bond ratings were lower in illinois because of the pension debt so the overall business climate mm -hmm. is not as good as our neighboring mm -hmm. states now mm -hmm. how rauner is going to do these changes with a supermajority in both the uh, both Madig houses of the uh, Madigan, Madigan and Cullerton, Cullerton yeah, yeah, how that's going to be done. But again, Bruce Rauner uh, during the campaign uh, basically said, you know, I'm a businessman and I want to do things in a different way. Now, my understanding is a businessman makes deals, mm -hmm. a businessman knows how to toll and twist arms and get things done and have finished products. Well, let's see if Bruce Rauner can do this for the state of Illinois. It's certainly going to be a challenge with, again, entrenched politicians controlling both houses of Illinois, such as Michael Manigan and, and, uh, and how John do they, How do they keep getting elected over and over? You know, how, don't they have a... Isn't there a time? No, no, Illinois doesn't have term limits. No term limits. No, see, no. that's another... It, it, so no people term. just come, to, it's like their jobs for the, their life. That's right. That, so they're like, that, they're, they think they're the Supreme Court. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's right. There's, there's no term limits. And other states, again, neighboring states, mm -hmm. have done term limits. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing. And, uh, they so when there's no changed. term limits, you have to uh, rely on the same person and, and, and buy by their whims and their rules. And yeah. it's very hard to change yeah. when somebody's been in office for so many years, like Cullerton. And in Cullerton, the, the people in the General Assembly, in the House, in the Senate, they didn't lose, any, the, the Democrats didn't lose any seats. They still have those, those foot soldiers. And that was redistricting. Now, the Republicans do redistricting, too. So every 10 years, there's a redistricting in the state. And so in Wisconsin and, and Indiana, the, there's more... Republicans now, there are more Republican favored districts in locally, mm -hmm. okay, than there are Democratic, because the Republicans controlled the houses. In, in their general assemblies, and the Democrats did the same thing in, in Illinois. Right. So what do you think is going to happen? Do you think, Mayor, let's go back to the mayor, you feel that he's going to be reelected? And because we, when you came last time, we had who was going to be was a, we had Rauner and yeah. we and we had Quinn, Quinn, and then we had Dole, and we had um, Schneider. Schneider. Right. So these are people that um, it was, you know, Surprising one was uh, Joel, right? Yeah, the, the yeah. Because, because was the well, because the, was... because the U, the U.S. congressional district, the tenth, had been 
fav you know, been drawn favoring the Democrats a little mm -hmm. bit. That's why Schneider had won by 3,000 votes in and the prior election. And there was gerrymandering, too. Where yeah, the, yeah, the the yeah, the ger yeah, there was gerrymandering. Right. But what happened But what happened was um, the Democrats didn't come out uh, like they were hoping to come out, the Democratic registered voters. Mm -hmm. And the other, uh, the independent voters, um, the in, in the, not the registered Democrats, not the registered Republicans. Yeah, we need more from the, the in, suburbs, right? Yeah, in, and we're talking about the 10th Congressional right. District as, as well as the state yeah. of Illinois. Independents, generally, they voted for um, uh, Dold in the 10th Congressional District, and independents tended to vote for Rauner in the gubernatorial election. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that, hence, that's the, the victories. So, but anyway, um, just... We're, and back to Rahm Emanuel, just recently, his son was attacked by... Uh, he was robbed. robbed. He was robbed. And it was just, uh, what, a couple of blocks from where he lived? A block no, it was on his block, but it wasn't in front of the house. On, well, I'm not going to say gets, this. That gets protected 24-7. The house gets protected, and the police are looking, I mm -hmm. guess, at the house. But this is a 17-year-old high school kid. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is not a, a small kid. And I think he walked down the street a little bit, and the view of the police mm -hmm. in the cars watching the house, and he was basically robbed by, uh, by, by, by two young people. You know, maybe after this there'll be a little bit more focus on crime in Chicago, yeah. because uh, maybe the mayor at one, you know, feel, maybe had felt that the crime section was not in his neighborhood, <laughs> was in that other neighborhood, and they, you know, and I, a lot of that crime it's going on in Chicago because it's not in my backyard. I don't really have to focus on it. Now it's in his backyard. Yeah, that's and true. so what do you think? Do, how do you think they're going to resolve or do? What is your idea about the crime situation in Chicago? Because I keep hearing whenever any of the stations they always refer to other states. Oh yes, the crime in Chicago. I mean, when they're even yeah. national news, they're always us. You know, yeah. when Ferguson happened, everything, oh, but Chicago also gets crime. So Chicago, the name Chicago is continuous with uh, Yeah, crime. and, and you, you know, we're talking about New York and, and, and Chicago. Um, the, the murder rate in New York City is significantly lower than the murder rate in Chicago. Hmm. Okay, that's a big, you know, why, is it, is why, it not, why is that happening? Is it that we don't, I mean, I noticed that with, uh, with uh, uh, Chewy, um, What's his? Uh, Chewy Garcia. Garcia, correct. Um, he's, he wants to put more police on the street. He says we don't have enough police. Now, you just, we, and, and maybe we do need more police, but then you're saying a few minutes ago that we don't have enough money to even play the police. Right, or, or right. We're, we're and then, bank. you know, then the headlines in the wake of, you know, the, 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 uh, the protests in Ferguson, Missouri, the protests uh, that are happening with the death of Mr. Garner in New York, police are being criticized, okay? And, and shot just recently, and, too. Sh and shot recently. And, and there's talk, too, about reducing the level of policing in some communities. There's just discussion about that. Yeah. Okay. So more how, how more community they? more community policing. It's 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 a balance. Mayor Man Emanuel has not been talking about that for, mm -hmm. to, for to his to his credit. Yeah, because I know Garcia's. That's one of his things. Enough police, and that's why we're here. Yeah. Crime. So again, I don't know how Mr. Garcia would would do that again. How would he fund it? And how, yeah. How would see a lot of would these a lot of these candidates? I will do this. I will do this. Yeah. And I will do this. But how? Well, how those do of these us people no, get those, paid. Now, those of us who remember President Clinton, when President Clinton ran as a moderate Democrat in 1992, he talked about bringing more police on the street, and one of the first things that he did was he funded additional police. These were. Police, city of Chicago police, police in all cities of the U.S. were being funded by federal funds, and that became a priority of the Clinton administration. Now, is will we get that federal was, funds? Well, again, during the Clinton administration, maybe the economy that first term was a little bit more robust, perhaps, than it was now, or maybe not. The, mm -hmm. you know, the economy seems to be coming, be coming back, but you don't hear that. Maybe we'll hear it in the 2000.
2016 national campaign that we should have more federal funding of, of police. Yeah, because I, I even heard bankruptcy, that Illinois should claim bankruptcy like Detroit did, Chicago I should, hope not. I certainly you know. hope not. But, I mean, you hear that, too. I've heard yeah. that in the news, But too. I'm, I'm optimistic. I'm, ho I'm really hoping that the Democratic leadership mm -hmm. could work with the new Republican governor and come up with some sensible solutions to Illinois' fiscal crisis. Do you have any idea what they want to do that that would change the situation that would get passed in the city of Chicago? I mean, we, we they even had that park restaurant. Remember that they you know, right. that they they that certain restaurants didn't even have to pay taxes yeah. on their land. Uh -huh. And there was something else recently that they did. Yeah, I mean, there's there's some a parking a parking uh, you know for to park downtown. There was some parking situation where to park, but the parking people uh, that own the lot didn't pay taxes. Right. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about taxes, and, and I don't think Mayor Emanuel wants to tax, I don't think he can get so much, how much tax can you get out of the people themselves? Right, on property tax, it would, it, right. would, it, would, it would really hurt. It would really hurt, and it would mean that people that are trying to stay in Chicago, mm -hmm. raise their families in Chicago, it's putting their, you know, it's putting the crunch on them even more, and I don't know, I don't think he wants to do that. He's going after certain people that haven't been paying the restaurant, the parking lot. So he is going after people that haven't been paying their fair share right. of taxes in Chicago. Yeah, and people who violate the red lights. And violate the red <laughs> lights and violate maybe not pay, you know, other things too. Mm -hmm. So home businesses, if, yeah. they're, if they're not keeping up their licenses on home businesses. You no, know, he. I know that the mayor is now in Chile, and a lot of things are. Is it Chile? Yeah, he, deserves yeah. he deserves a yeah. He deserves. He needs a family vacation, especially after his son. You know, that would be good for them. But what other things that you see that, you know, as we're talking Chicago politics, maybe some of the, you know, U.S. politics, of, you know, what is your last time you did some predictions for us on who is going to win the governor race and the senators? What is your chance on who do you think is going to run in the Democratic Party in 2016? We have Hillary Clinton. Yeah. And then we have. Yeah, a lot of the progressive Democrats would like to see Elizabeth Warren mm -hmm. as the standard bearer of the Democratic Party. Right. Um, there's a lot of people who don't, you know, I talked about. The Clintons, people are saying, hey, isn't this a democracy?